I bid thee welcome to Creature Feature. I am the Count Gordival, and tonight, tonight I bring you a movie that wouldn't die. No one's quite figured out why it wouldn't die. But it's about the brain that wouldn't die. But that's almost irrelevant to what's going to happen tonight, because tonight, tonight on Creature Feature, we're going to have our first guest from Hollywood. And this one's in California, not in Maryland. Yes. Tonight, we're going to bring you someone who is a prime mover behind the... Mm. Mm. The entire thing of fandom. Mm. What a great... Hold on a second. Yes, what's, what do you want, Mommy? You can say something? You got my... Mm. What, he can't make it? Oh. Oh. Okay, he couldn't make it, so we're gonna have Forrest Ackerman on. Forrest J. Ackerman, oh, he, oh, I'm kidding. He's the prime mover, one of the prime, I mean, this guy is, what can I say? I'm going to introduce him a little bit later, and we're going to find out for ourselves. I mean, I've asked fans all over the world, or at least in Washington and Baltimore, for questions to ask, and we're going to find out the real behind the scenes knowledge that this man has. Also, through the modern miracle of Channel 20's engineering department. Careful, that's a collector's item. We have the speaker over here, and it's hooked up to these wires, and it runs through here, and it's hooked up to this. This is a brain that wouldn't die. And uh, let's see if we can, uh, well, we'll talk to it a little bit later. He's going to help question 42. Uh, no, I don't think so. I hope it's not a monkey brain. We'll find out. Also, I want to remind you that Creature Feature is sponsored by none other than Marino's Pizzas and Subs, of course. And, you know, when you, if a commercial comes up, you see the phone number call because they deliver. They really do, and you can have a great... That's great. <laughs> I knew you would love it. Square pizzas, the whole thing. Okay, right now, while we get Mr. Ackerman ready to come on to Creature Feature, let us get into the first part of our movie, The Brain That Wouldn't die. Let me die. Let me die. I should have known he was as good as dead when they wheeled him in. You did everything possible, everything you could, Dr. Coria. Everything. Everything except save my patient. Everything in the books.
Now, Dad, do I have permission to take over and try things my way? The operating room is no place to experiment. He's dead. I can't do any harm. Very well. The corpse is yours. Do what you want to do. All right. Make an opening into the chest cavity. Apply 100 milliamps of current directly to the heart, then massage by hand. I'll handle the brain area. By yourself? By myself. be still alive. He is. I just picked up a faint pulse beat. Keep massaging the heart. I am, I am. These electric shocks should stimulate the motor area enough to innovate the heart again. Then he won't need any external stimuli. Keep away from the motor area. You'll paralyze him for good. Which would you rather be, paralyzed or dead? Don't try to play God. Some choices are not yours to make. When the obstetrician has to decide which to save the mother or the child, who plays God then? It's part of the game. Game? The human body's not a jigsaw puzzle to experiment on. Still playing it safe like the other doctors, hmm? Might as well save my breath. Keep massaging the heart. You've already lost your patient, doctor. I'm going to save mine. His pulse is coming back stronger than ever. It's unbelievable. Nothing's unbelievable if you have the nerve to experiment. I've been working on something like this for weeks. In your laboratory? I knew this would work if only I had the opportunity. You don't conduct experiments on people. You should be sure of the results first. I am now. Stop massaging the heart. Let's see if it can take over by itself. Close up the chest. I'm about to finish with the cerebral area. How's his pulse? Strong and steady. You did perform a miracle. I may not approve of your methods, but I am proud of your results. Extraordinary operation, son. But it still is too risky, too uncontrolled. Saved his life. And the after effects? What about them? You've lost the urge to experiment, to explore.
You're explore on people. Before you put a scalpel to one, an operation like this needs testing under every condition. Over and over again. Rabbits, mice, monkeys, not people. That man who should be dead now won't think so. There's more to surgery than just being a carpenter to patch up walls or a plumber to drain pipes. Our bodies are capable of adjusting in ways we've hardly dreamt of. If we can only find the key. I'm so close now, so very close. The key to what? Complete transplantations. To be able to transplant limbs and organs. To be able to replace diseased and damaged parts of the body as easily as we replace eye corneas now. So that the new parts will join together as though they were born there. It can't be done. It can be done. With my new special compound I've created, I'll do it. I know I can do it. Sure, sure. That's what you say. That's what I know. I know I'm close. Darling, I'm so proud of you, I could kiss you. Promises, huh? Always promises. <laughs> Careful, your father's liable to report us. <laughs> and stop the floor show. When you two are married, it won't be fun to watch anymore. Well, I can promise you one thing. Your grandchildren won't be test tube babies. You better hurry if you want to catch that plane to Denver, Dad. You know that medical convention can't start without you. Uh, Jan, you'd uh, better check about my reservations. Oh, yes, I'll call the airport. I'll be right back. Bill, the line between scientific genius and obsessive fanaticism is a thin one. Now, I want you on the right side of it. If I don't experiment, how can I hope to perform operations like the one you almost messed up? But I can't cover up for you anymore. The superintendent had it out with me. He thinks it's you who's been stealing those limbs from the amputee operations. So what if it is? I've got to have limbs for my transplant experiments. Dead test an experiment. Test an experiment. Yes, but limbs and organs taken from people. I've got to have them to work with. Sure, I've made a few mistakes, but I've learned from them. I've learned. Your reservations are all set. 3.30 take on. Well, what have you two planned for the weekend? Oh, nothing much. Just a quiet weekend. Are you sure you're not going up to the country house? You're always sneaking off up there. The place gives me the creeps. I, I should have sold it when your mother died. You can't sell that place. Well, I mean, it's nice to get away from the city. I can work without anyone snooping around. You spend too much time up there. All right, I'll, uh, I'll see you both in a few days. Got to clean up and get out of here. Fine operation or not, Bill. You're walking on thin ice. But don't go too far. Every time you touch me, I go out of my mind. I want to kiss you. Bill, I want to get married. I can't stand not having you. You've been wonderful. Oh, I'd rather be a bride. In a few more weeks. And nothing will keep us apart. We'll be together. Dr. Cortner. I'm so glad you're here. I was afraid you'd gotten away. There was a very important phone message that came to you. It sounded quite urgent. I've been looking everywhere. It was from a man called Kurt. He called from the country place, and he said something terrible has happened. He wanted you to come right out. Thank you. Well, you've always wanted to know what's kept me away from you so many weekends. Have you got the keys to your car? Maybe in 1958, what day was it? February. February, 1958, you were walking past the newsstand, you see, and you had 35 cents in your hot little hands, and you didn't know what to do with it, and you saw this cover. Right. And you said, I've got to have her. And then the monster wasn't too bad either. And you said, and you bought this 
and you stuck it away in a drawer someplace, and you still have it, you're very fortunate, because this is issue number one of Famous Monsters, and we have with us today, tonight, tonight, I greet you. I'm so proud, I'm so happy, I'm so ecstatic. Uh, well, I'm also glad that we have with us Forrest J. Ackerman, who was the, the founder and public editor, and I mean, you, this is your baby. Yes, I, I was the founder, I found it right there in my typewriter. Isn't that incredible? And, you know, and, and it, amongst other things, I mean, uh, Famous Monsters is really just a, a, a fairly late thing in your career. You, 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 you encompass so, the whole genre. Well, I, mean, I, I go back to 1922 when I was five and a half years old. One glorious night I saw a film called One Glorious Day, and that was the beginning of my activity in the world of fantasy. And you started collecting things, I understand, until your mother was ready to throw you or something That's else out the house. That's right. My gosh, when I was 12 years old, she was so concerned. She says, son, do you realize you have 27 of these magazines? Why, by the time you're a grown man, you might have 100. Well, mother made it to nearly 94, and my 18-room home and three garages in which couldn't park a pogo stick are now filled with 300,000 books and magazines and paintings and props. Is there anything missing from your collection? Yes, if anybody out there within the sound of my voice has a first edition 1818 of Frankenstein, I'd be very happy to have them add that to it. I have 200 different Frankensteins, but I'm still missing that very first edition. All right. Well, now, Ophelia, this collection brings you here to Washington Island. Mm -hmm. Why are you here, not here in Creature Feature, I don't know why you're here in Creature Feature, but <laughs> due to your poor taste, I'm sure. <laughs> but why are you here in Washington? Well, there's a traveling exposition that's been uh, created. It's going all around the country for the next couple of years. I understand it's getting so popular, it may even go outside the country, Japan and Germany and various places. Want it. It's called Hollywood Legend and Reality. And I've kind of contributed to the irreality of it. I have a big poster there from uh, called the Phantom Empire with Gene Autry about a civilization 10,000 feet under the, under the uh, surface of the of the earth. I was going to interrupt you because yeah. I don't think a lot of people realize that Gene Autry did science fiction. Mm -hmm. They think of the strumming yeah. singing cowboy, you know, back in the saddle again, but he actually did. Well, for that. 13 weeks, yes, he was uh, there in Murania with uh, the robots. And then also uh, Ray Harryhausen, who's the great animator of dinosaurs and mythological creatures, he destroyed the Washington Dome at one time with a flying saucer and Earth versus the flying saucers and have the model. Okay, and at which point. Uh, We'll, we will show you later that mob, we have the, the scene, the destruction scene of that mob. I just, I, I, I guessed that. Okay, very, very sharp. We are going to ask, and we're going to activate our not quite so dead brain here. It looks pretty dead to me in just a little bit, but right now, let's get back to our film. Haven't you ever taken me up here before? Because the things I'm working on don't need an audience. That telephone call. What about it? All right, all right. Hold off the questions. Why the mystery, Bill? What's it all about? We'll be there soon enough. You'll see. I've got to hurry. <laughs>
Accident. I've got to save her. I've got to save her. What is it? What have you got there? Kirk, please. Sterilize the tubes and instruments quickly. What are you going to do? Aren't you going to have a look in the closet first? Oh, I can't now. This is more important. But you don't understand. For God's sake, Kirk, this urgent. Do as I tell you before it's too late. I can't waste precious time arguing with you.
again on Creature Feature with us is Flory Ackerman. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I'm trying to come up with a title that I could that I could I could put upon you. Oh, Mr. Monster, perhaps okay. on this. Mr. Monster. Okay. okay. You have brought with you. You're wearing, as a matter of fact, this this lovely ring here. Can we get a tight shot of this ring? Now, tell us a little bit about it. Yes. Well, this uh, was created for Bela Lugosi, Mr. Count Dracula himself. Uh, he wore it in Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein. It's also been seen upon the hand of the late Lon Chaney Jr. And I made a point of having Christopher Lee wear it and Barbara Steele and uh, Boris Karloff uh, laid a finger upon it one time when he was making his final four films. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, that has been handled by many of the outstanding personalities in the horror genre. Now we have this, this, this Dracula statue right here. Yes, also. Bela Lugosi had 25 of these made uh, at the time he was still living in Hungary by an outstanding sculptor there. He was down to the last three at the time I met him. I knew him the last three years of his life and was at his funeral. So uh, he let me have that when there were just three left. Now who, who are some of the big stars that you've gotten to know over the years? Uh, I was in the company of Boris Karloff on ten occasions in my life. Uh, one magic hour, every word that came out of his mouth I had put into it. I did a Decca record album called An Evening with Boris Karloff and mm. His Friends. And I've known uh, Elsa Lanchester, the bride of Frankenstein, and Bobby Brzee, who's a new cult queen coming up fast, kind of in the footsteps of uh, Barbara Steele. Since mm. she's retired, she did about 20 of the horror films. I uh, knew Fritz Lang very well, the man who uh, did Metropolis and Woman in the Moon and discovered Peter Lorre and put him in M as the child murderer. Uh, I met Lorre on the set of The Raven. And I uh, particularly very well know a marvelous gentleman, uh, Vincent Price. We've been regarded oh. sometimes as uh, kind, of, uh, kind of twins. As a matter of fact, we were together in a hotel in Madrid when he was uh, head of the Fantasy Film Festival there, and I was immediately mistaken for his brother. Yeah, I see the resemblance there, yeah. I, I think if we'd only had a tape, uh, he and I were revving along 120 kilometers an hour in a car going out to where Cervantes had, had written, uh, oh, what's that, Windmill? Don Quixote. Right Don Quixote. I don't know whether he, he wrote Don Quixote. I don't know whether Don Quixote wrote back or not. But <laughs> in any event, Vincent and I were, were revving along. And of all, oh, can you imagine what in the world we were doing a d duet on Al Jolson's Sonny Boy? <laughs> I wanted to ask you about, you, you say, the, the brain that, that wouldn't die. Oh, yeah, the, yeah. Bra the brain. I don't, why wouldn't the brain die? I mean, doesn't it know that a, that a blonde brain has more fun than a, than a brunette? Why it wouldn't die, really? I, I don't uh, know. Maybe it never met, uh, met maybe, uh, maybe it didn't meet me, me, me squirrel. <laughs> you got me tongue-tied. <laughs> Speaking about the brain, brain, we, we act, brain, uh, hello, brain. Hey, you, hey, hey, brain. hey, watch it, watch it. We, we got it, we got it. Do you have hey. any... Hey, watch it, fella. Don't tap me like that. Oh, uh, why? Are you sensitive? Of course. Hey, look. You. <laughs> now we even get into that. Where do you come from? What do you mean? Where do I come yeah, from? Yeah, what do you do for a living? Or did you do for a living? Well, I uh, I can't really talk about it a lot, but I work at the Pentagon. No, oh, that must explain why it's so small. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. I thought it was son of Donovan's brain, yeah. maybe. <laughs> uh, you got any questions for Mr. Ackerman right now? On uh, yes, as a matter of fact, I do. Would you step away, please? Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. That's Ackerman, right. what's, what's the real story on Bella, Bella Lugosi, that is? Bella's role in Plan 9 from Outer Space. Well, that was a posthumous role. They had uh, shot just a few scenes of him wandering around in a graveyard, and then they got the notion after he had died of making this uh, film, and so they resurrected uh, what little footage they had on him, and then they got a, a kind of a look-alike who spent the rest of the of the film uh, holding uh, the cape up in front of him so that theoretically he couldn't tell the difference, but Bela never lived to, to see any of the footage on that or realize that he had got the Golden Turkey Award as the, oh, was, the, was the most horrifying horror <laughs> film of all time. Was he planned to, to do this role? Uh, I believe so. They had a couple of more films lined up for him. Uh, oh, the Ghoul Goes West or something like that, and uh, in Plan 9. But uh, say he, I was with him uh, two weeks uh, before he went into the, the, the final black sleep at the preview of a picture called The Black Sleep. And, uh, he never lived a complete Plan 9. Okay. I know we could go on and on and on. Unfortunately, we have to go back to this movie we're showing tonight. Maybe we'll talk to him. Get, get get the uh, 40s opinion on tonight's movie we <clears throat> maybe we shouldn't 
Let's go back to the brain that wouldn't die. We'll be back in a little bit. The eyelids. I saw them move. It can't be. My eyes are deceiving me. What you see is real. What's done is done, and what I've done is right. It's the work of science. I remember fire. Burning. success with transplants, now I can do it for her. Transplant her to what? I brought her back. She'll live and I'll get her another body. I can make her complete again. Only a madman can believe that she could ever be like before. Don't argue with me. I love her too much to let her stay like this. I'll restore her as before. You'll see. Can't you realize? Can't you see? There's a pattern to all that lives. An order, an arrangement. She had a heart and a brain and her spirit was in both, not in one or the other. No. I'll give her a brain and a heart. Yes, and what of her soul? You say you love her and you can remember her love for you. Then how can you make of her an experiment of horror? All the skill and science I possess was meant for this. Life has a pattern. The whole pattern of my life is shaping itself to save her now. Then you intend to go through with it? Yes. Sleep, my darling. Rest and grow stronger. Keep her alive under these conditions. 48. 50 hours at the most. Yes. And you really believe you can work a transplant on her? Successfully? Yes. Like my arm. Withered and deformed. Yours was an early experiment that failed. With her, I'm using my new adreno serum. Must work. I, I've got to go now. If the police or anyone call, tell them you don't know anything about it. I don't think anyone will trace us here because her body was burned in the wreckage. Yes, yes, of course, of course. Look, Bill, before you go, do have a look in that closet. It's the reason why I called you up here. Keep it locked. Well, this night it got so violent it almost broke out. Oh. Oh, not through that thickness. Keep it closed. I've got to think about her now. I've got to find her a body. How are you going to go about getting one?
Bill, how will you do it? There are ways. There are ways. brain that wouldn't die on the TV set didn't die, ours did. He went back to the Pentagon, I think. Oh, well, we'll discombobulate him, take him away, and, uh, anyone want him for lunch? Never mind. Oh. Oh. Excuse me, mommy. Mommy, mommy. Yes, mommy. Yes, you have a question for Mr. Ackerman. <laughs> ah, mommy wants to know, in your collection, do you collect movies? Uh, I collect video cassettes nowadays, yes. What is your all-time favorite movie? Well, I'd say in the horror field, you give me two choices. Uh, one in the silent would be Lon Chaney as the Phantom of the Opera. And uh, in the beginning of the talking era, I think uh, it's never been surpassed uh, Boris Karloff's rendition of the Frankenstein monster. Yeah, you know, either in Frankenstein or the Bride of Frankenstein. Which do you like better? Uh, the original. Uh, original? Mm -hmm. How about in the area of science fiction? 
Metropolis, definitely. I just saw it for the 77th time in Berlin recently. Now, which version, the original or the re recreation? Uh, well, I worked with uh, Giorgio Moroder on the recreation, but it was that version I saw there. And uh, the young uh, hero of it was staying in our hotel, now 83 years old, Gustav Freerlich. Whatever happened to the, to, the, to the robot from the film, do you have it? Uh, it was probably blown to bits in the Blitz of Berlin. Nobody really knows what became of it, but uh, two young chaps in Hollywood spent a year and a half and 600 hours and reconstructed her for me. I have dogs running around, I don't know. Okay, we've got some upcoming movies. We won't even talk about tonight's film, because everybody already has their opinion of tonight's film. We have some new film or films mm -hmm. coming up next week. We've got Assignment Terror with Michael Rennie. Now, you were talking about that a little while ago. That's, you know a little bit about that. Yeah, I think uh, because it uh, had a similar title to one I was in called Dracula versus Frankenstein. I think it was called Frankenstein versus Dracula, so it sounds to me like this uh, Italo uh, German film has been given an American title. I think he was the only one who actually spoke English and that the rest was synced in. Yeah, his, 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 his mouth does meet the, uh, the, the things. Uh -huh. Okay, that's a Simon Taylor. Now, Blood and Lace, have you ever heard of that? Yes, yes. Uh, oh, so that's the kind of program you said, well, I'll be back, Blood and Lace. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind the lace. But <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, look. But also may have some roller derby queens on too, but that's besides the point. Okay, I, th I want you to look, at, we have a clip from another upcoming film. I want you to mm -hmm. watch this clip here and see if you can tell me a little bit about this movie here. Uh, let's, let's, can we look at this movie clip here of an upcoming film here? Uh oh, you've been doing your homework. That's bad Dr. Beaumont there. In like my twin, Dr. Acula. No, absolutely not, because I was suffering. I had my arm in a sling. They called up and said, you want to be killed by the Frankenstein monster? I said, no, I think I'll sit this one out. And they said, no, no, something new has been added. The monster's been bitten by Dracula. He's a vampire. He'll just fang you to death for a hundred bucks. So I thought, <laughs> okay. Uh, but when the time came, they spent 12 hours trying to get the goop on the monster's face, and it kept falling off. <laughs> Dracula had to be on the Red Eye Express back to New York for a play the next day. So finally they said, even if the makeup falls off in front of the camera, we got to do it. <laughs> so then they went to put the fangs in. No room for the fangs. Said, sorry, we got to just uh, squash Ackerman to death. Well, that's exactly <laughs> what I didn't want. And what you saw there, that wasn't acting. I was really trying to get away from the six-foot, six-bruiser. And my great death scene, I say, ever since I was five and a half, I've been watching people dead on the screen, and they never fooled me. I always saw a little breathing going on. So there I'm smashed down on the asphalt, holding my breath, determined to give an Academy Award that nobody is going to say I didn't look dead. Well, the director forgot to call cut. <clears throat> he just walked away and left me there. And, <laughs> and I was holding my breath and holding my breath, and I thought, God, I must be brown, I must be blue, I must be polka dot by now. And finally, my dear wife heard her whisper, what, what's the matter with my husband? Why doesn't he get up? So someone came over and tapped me. You okay, Mr. Ackerman? <gasps> <laughs> yes. <laughs> but thank God it wasn't rehearsed or I might not be on Creature Feature today to tell the tale. And the worst part is they don't show you laying there. No, no. <laughs> you go whoop and that's right. it. <laughs> We're going to have more. I, as a matter of fact, there's another story I think we can find out about, a little bit more about. But right now, let's get back to the brain that wouldn't die.
took you so long. What made you think I'd come? You know a good thing when you see it. Yeah, there was plenty to see. I liked your act. Is that all you liked? Well, your costume, what there was of it, was interesting. Is that all? The rest of the equipment is standard. But, uh, the arrangement is pretty special. You know, tourists just looking at the sight. What are you doing here, slumming? Well, I get my allowance once a week. Okay, if you're so loaded, you pay for the drinks. I already did. Are you hustling for the house? I hustle for myself. I'm the leading lady around here. I can sit with the squares out front, or I can relax back here with my friends. I'll bet you don't have an enemy in the world. Hmm? get done looking, then what? I operate. I get your message. They're coming across. You could flip any chick in the house. Why me? Well, like I said, I'm looking. Well, you don't have to look any further. I'm not going to fake it for you. When do you go on again, hmm? When? <laughs> Relax. I got another show yet, but it could be for you. Oh, I was just asking. Try taking. I'm getting nervous. I'm over 21. No, it isn't that. It's... I've just got things to do. Things to take care of. Well, if I don't exactly make you sick, what could be more important that could be taken care of right now? Well, I've, uh... I've got to see about helping somebody. Somebody who needs my help very badly. You can't cut out of me now, baby. Now when you got me feeling so good. I'm so warm all over. I'm good for you. I know I'm good for what you want. You may be just what I'm looking for. You got your nerve. Oh, look who's talking. Why don't you haul your beat-up body back to the bar with the rest of the flies? Keep your G-string on. I only came in here to change my clothes. I got admission. Now I'd like to see the rest of the show. Come back in half an hour and maybe you will. Get lost. Hi, lover boy. I see you've met the queen. <laughs> hey. Come here, don't hide. You know, you've got the kind of face a girl doesn't mind looking at. Even out front, all the other girls are asking about you. Get out of here. Two's company. Three's a crowd. Who's to tell me to blow if I don't want to? This here's my dressing room, too. Remember? It kills her to see me make time. You're the only thing that's going to be made around here tonight. Honey. Eat your heart out. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, uh, I'd better be going, hmm? What for? Look what you've done. You come busting with your two cents. Let me see you later. I'll make everything up to you. I swear I will. Yeah. Come on back later. I'll remember you. Yeah, that's what I'm afraid of. You lousy tramp. Once in a blue moon, I launched into a guy with class, and you messed it up. Eh, what makes you think you had him? He wouldn't have you on a theft. Says who? Says me. What's a guy like that want with leftovers for? Leftovers? Why, you cheap third-rate stripper! You are going over it! You cheap leave me! Let's go! Oh, well, go! I'll mess you up! 
up above. You should be surprised. Oh, I'll try all that. Meow. Inside the closet. What has he done to you? I know there's someone there. Knock once if you hear me. if I'm not the first. He should have let me die. I hate him for what he's done to me. If he only knew what it's like being like this. Do you know what it's like? Together we could have revenge. You want revenge? still untouched and his keeping me alive has given me a power he didn't count on power that you can feel across this room and through that door can't you that we're both more than things. We're a power as hideous as our deformities. Together we'll wreak our revenge. I shall create power and you will enforce it. You the thing inside. Be the thing out here.
even more terrible than you. No, my deformed friend. Like all quantities, horror has its ultimate. And I'm that. No. There is a horror beyond yours. And it's in there. Locked behind that door. The paths of experimentation twist and turn through mountains of miscalculation and often lose themselves in error and darkness. Behind that door is the sum total of Dr. Cordner's mistakes. He had no right to bring me back to this. Perhaps not. Who knows? But you should know that before he injected the serum into that, it was but a mass of grafted tissues, lifeless just lay there, weighted down with its transplants of broken limbs and amputated arms. But with this serum, it, it began to breathe. It's impossible. Would you have thought possible what he's already done? Take yourself. He's brought you back. You live. Only a few years ago, all transplants were impossible. That's what he's been doing up here when no one could see his work. Yes. Experimenting with transplants on that. And on me. Letting him tear away my flesh time after time. Test after test. My hopes shattering with each grafted arm he fastened to me. Watching it wither and warp. Instead of strengthening. You see, he's learned from his mistakes. And you stayed with him, helping him in his grotesque work that he claims is for science. Was there a place for me on the outside with this? In the world where eyes would look upon me with pity. And people would turn away from me in disgust. No. The alcoholic has his bottle. The dope addict his needle. I had my research. I used to be a surgeon. It was my life. And one night in the laboratory there, there was an accident. They had to amputate my arm. And he has used you to... I have no choice. He was my only hope. A surgeon needs both his arms, not just one. Well, you see, my transplanted grotesqueness stayed, and so did I. I live only for the day he can work a successful transplant to my body. That is why I stay. Transplant my head onto another body. Yes. And he's insane with the belief he can do it. But the tissues of my body would reject the tissues of another. Reject it as the foreign substance it is. The transplant would never take, it would never stay in place. My blood's antibodies would attack it as they attack any invading matter. Yes, but his new discovery, this new serum, may change all that. This serum injected into the bloodstream affects the lymphoid tissues. Here, in the neck. The lymphoids that provide the antibodies for the blood that attack foreign transplanted matter. It was untested, untried, till we used it on you. That liquid in the blood that's being pumped through what's left of me is 
what makes me feel the... <laughs> he may produce results he didn't ask for. Results? You mean... like this? Results more terrible than your arm of relative beauty. Results of power. Of magnitude. Power? What power? Can't you see that you're at the mercy of every element of the universe? How can you speak of power? I heard a power. This liquid that he's pumped into me. My brain burns with it. That thing inside and I are in touch. Want me to prove it? You can prove nothing. You're powerless. I'll show you how powerless I am. You. Behind that door. Let me know if you hear me. Whoever. Whatever you are. I command you. You understand me. I'm only a head, and you're whatever you are. Together we're strong, more powerful than any of them. What are you running from? What's wrong with you? <clears throat> Something beyond control in that room. There's nothing beyond my control. She's alive and I'll keep her alive until I find her a body. Uh, I can't talk anymore. I'm tired. I've got to go to sleep. And you... you didn't find her a body? Well, I've got to be careful. I can't afford to be identified as the last person seen with a girl before she disappears. Do you think you'll get one? There are many things left for tomorrow. Talking with Forty Ackerman, who's Mr. Monster, and you, you've started how many different movies, or been in how many different movies? I've been in about 20 and I'm going to do seven so far this year. Now, we we're, were saying you were actually in the Michael Jackson video? Yes, yes. If you'll recall, there's a sequence where uh, he and his girlfriend are in the theater. She gets frightened of the werewolf. She says, I, I got to get out of here. She leaves. He leaves. That left two empty seats, and John Landis had deliberately got me out of bed at 12.30 after midnight to come down and sit there in a red shirt and reprise a role I'd done 13 years earlier for him, eating popcorn in schlock. Well, he was uh, so enthusiastic about my role in Michael Jackson's thriller that I graduated in his next film, Into the Night. I was there eight and a half minutes eating cheesecake. <laughs> And then I was told that in his next picture, an untitled one, that I would have a real, quote, juicy roll. So knowing a sense of humor, I figured, well, I'll be seen eating watermelon. watermelon something like that. Yes. Instead of that, it turned out to be president of the United States in a sort of a film within a film. The main film is untitled, but the, the film you'll see on TV is called Amazon Women on the Moon with Sybil Danning. <laughs> And uh, yes, it sounds I'm, like a big I'm uh, it was theoretically made in 1950, so I'm playing president of the United States in that far distant year of 1980, with the governors of all 48 states uh, were wel <laughs> welcoming the first man on the moon. <laughs> you, uh, you, you're you're really no, not an actor though. You're you're no, primarily a, a writer. That's right. Yes, I sit 25 hours a day at a typewriter or wiggling my fingers, but. Uh, a lot of young chaps that were... I brought Halloween to the kids of the country every month for about 25 years, and those kids have turned out to be the likes of Steven Spielberg and Stephen King and George Lucas and John Landis, and now that they're making their own movies, why they like to have me, for old Lang Syne's sake, uh, do a, a part in the picture. King! Now oh. hold. Yes, Mom. Yes, Mommy. Mm -hmm. Ah, for all those... Yes, 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 yes. For all those video fans, yes. Yes! Mommy, please! Let me ask. For all those video fans, though, who, who are out there and they go to the video store mm -hmm. and pick out 
can you list the list the movies that you've been in so they can go look for you? Well, there's some I know that they can find at the end of something called Sleaze Mania Strikes Back. Uh, I, I do a bit in Beach Blanket Blood Bath. Don't try to sing that fast. Beach Blanket Blood Bath. Bath. <laughs> and um, in The Howling, The Time Travelers, Dracula versus Frankenstein. That's the, one we just the saw. Curator of the last museum on Earth after World War III has destroyed civilization in a film called Aftermath. And there's one that really went to my head. It's a picture called Scalps. Mmm. That was the joke. It was the, mm -hmm. the scalp you know, it went, went to my head. <laughs> I think I'm going to let you do the show, and I'm going to go. <laughs> hey, we, we got to go back to the movie for a little bit. We'll have more of Forty Ackerman after some more of the break. about to call a cop the way you were looking me over. How have you been, Bill? Oh, just fine, Donna. I haven't seen you for quite a while. Too long. I'm still waiting for that call you once promised me. Well, you know how it is with interns. All work. All work and no play even makes for dull doctors. You're gonna lose that bedside manner of yours. <laughs> Say, how about a little side course in anatomy? Yours? Anytime. No, not mine. A body beautiful contest. You know, bathing suit models, plenty of females on the hoof. Your eyes will have a field day. Interested? Well, why not? You're just what the doctor ordered. Come on, jump in. Uh, on second thought, I just remembered I've got to stop by my place and take care of a few things. It only take a minute. You don't mind, do you? I always follow the doctor's orders. Anything you prescribe, I'll take. That's what I like about you, Donna. Always so obliging. Hey, Donna, where are you going? What's the hurry? Hi, Jeannie. We're going to look for some bodies. You mean the contest? Yeah. Got any room for me? Oh, sure. Plenty. Bill, this is Jeannie Reynolds. Jeannie, this is Dr. Hi. Bill Corner. Hello. Hop in, but first got to stop off at his place. Sure. Well, as a matter of fact, that can wait. Now that there's two of you, we'll have to wait. Guess he thinks there's safety in numbers. Well, this time there is. We promise not to hurt you. And I promise not to hurt you. <laughs> <laughs> Bill, this is it. Yeah, it looks fine. like we're about ready to go. Backstage are five of the girls who have reached the contest finals, and we are here to choose Miss Body Beautiful. Now, we've eliminated everyone except the five finalists, and they will be judged solely by your applause. So let's bring them on. First, Helen Appleton. Betty 
the nicest body I've ever seen. A second to you? No, another girl, a figure model. You remember that one in school years ago? The one who had the accident. Oh, yeah, yeah. Doris, uh... Doris Powell. Yeah, is she still around? Few people see her nowadays. She just stays in her studio posing for art classes and camera bugs. Figure model. Poses for art classes. The nicest body she's ever seen. The nicest body. Maybe this is the one she's got to be. I can keep Jan alive only for a few more hours. I've got to find her a body. Tends to kill somebody, to rob them of their body. Do you hear me? Yes, you hear me. You know how Bill's egotism drives him on and on to infamy upon infamy. Good ever be born of? Evil. Yet he claims his work is for science, for humanity. To be joined to flesh, not your own. What's human in this? Of how you must exist. Locked behind that door. We've got to stop him. Okay, boys, I've had it for two Come on, baby, one more. Just one more, please. Another five minutes, baby. Time's just about up anyway. Okay. Say, Doris, would you like to have a drink with me? Just you and me, away from everybody? Some place where nobody will butt in with. You and I can really be alone. No, thank you. How about posing for me? Private like. I'll pay you real money. Real good money. The kind of money they don't throw at you every day. And for doing hardly nothing at all. I do my posing for classes only, Wednesdays and Saturdays, 8 to 10. Yes, I know, but we can... Good night.
see it all, mister. The show's over. Next time, bring a camera and buy a ticket. I'm not running a charity. You don't remember me, do you, Doris? Every guy on the make gives me that same tired line. I'm Bill Courtner. Bill Courtner. Long time ago, that fight. He almost tore that wise guy apart for making fun of me. After my accident. Look, uh, can't we go somewhere and talk? No, I don't date men. Because I pose like I do. Your mind works overtime. You get ideas. You're all alike. Oh, not all of us. I'm not on the make for you. Okay, so maybe you're better than most. Maybe not. I still hate all men. I hate them for what one did to me once. Have you forgotten? Well, have you? No, I haven't forgotten. Well, neither have I. I carry the memory around with me. But you can't hide yourself away here forever, posing bare in front of a bunch of neurotics. Listen, Galahad. I trusted a man once, all the way. What did it get me? He gets his head full of jealous lies, and I You've get... You've got to forget what How happened. can I forget? I carry the memory around with me. Am I so appealing to you now? Still so interested? Doesn't it make you sick? You don't even turn away from me, like everyone else does. To me, you're not ugly. I see only beauty in you. You have a lovely body and a face that can be made beautiful again also. Yeah. I've heard that song before. I'm a doctor, I know. My father's one of the leading plastic surgeons. If anyone can help you, we can. I know I can. I've been to doctors. It's no use. The scar tissue's too deep. No one can help me. Oh. Oh, that was a few years ago. Today, nothing's hopeless. Uh, we can graft scar and skin tissue that... Well, we can even freeze areas of the skin and sand away damaged skin tissues. The way you say that, that look in your eyes, I almost want to believe you. I almost want to believe you. Well, then start believing, hmm? Even if your father could help me, I couldn't pay him the kind of money it would take. Don't talk about money. He does a lot of work without any charge. Why should you want to do this for me? What's in it for you? I'm going to make your face beautiful again. Cut it off and give your body away. <laughs> I'm sorry, Bill. I have been knocked around so many times. I've lost count. It's tough living with this. I don't mean to sound ungrateful. Well, because you've been battered around, don't go sour. You shouldn't lose your trust in people. Not all of us. I believe you. I want to. Do you really think something can be done? Only my father knows. Look, we have a country place just out of town. He's visiting for the weekend. I could take you there now for a consultation. You mean tonight? Well, if you'd rather wait till he comes back, if oh, he no, comes no. back. Oh, no, no. I mean, he wouldn't be annoyed being bothered with me so late at night. Well, you let me do the worrying, hmm? I'll do anything that'll help me get rid of this face. <laughs> well, that's where I come in. Remember the last time I helped you? Where are you going? Who are you calling? My girlfriend. I want to tell her the news. Before you know what the verdict's going to be? 
you're right. I, I shouldn't talk until I know what's going to happen. Well, my girlfriend, she's supposed to drop in later. I'll have to leave her a note or something. Well, just tell her you'll see you later. Otherwise, she'll ask a lot of nosy questions. We want to be sure first. Just throw something on, huh? I'll be with you in a minute. Just tell her you'll keep in touch. I'll leave it on the table. She'll see it. Had to go out with old friend Bill Courtner. We'll call you tomorrow. Doris. Here. I'll leave it on the lamp. She'll see it, won't you? That's the first place she'll look. I'll leave the lights on for her. I have waited so long for this. So have I. Alice for Lugosi, I assume. I don't know just what the five is. But, you know. <laughs> Lugosi five? Yeah. We're back with Tony Ackerman. I've got to ask you this question. Yeah, you were talking about your, some of your favorite movies. I understand, though, at one time in the not-too-distant past, you put together a list of the ten worst movies. Mm -hmm. And, uh... Most of them turned out to be American International, if I'm not mistaken. Well, I think you're confusing me with uh, Joe Dante. When he was a kid around 13, he sent in his 50 worst films, and I call it Dante's Inferno, obviously. Uh, about 25 years later, either the uh, producer had forgiven or, or forgotten because he gave him a chance to make Piranha, and he was off and running in this, one of the uh, better-known genre directors now in Horrorwood, California. <coughs> okay. <clears throat> yes. Uh, the other question I have is, I understand that you also did an appearance on the Murder of Griffin show that was kind of, that had, that it was kind of an experience. Yes, he, uh, he asked me to bring a number of uh, objects on. Uh, I was wearing Bela Lugosi's Dracula cape on that evening and had some of the creatures, uh, the models from King Kong, and uh, I have life mask of Karloff and Lugosi and Cheney Jr. and Laurie. I was demonstrating them. And uh, nothing unusual happened? Nothing unusual? No. no. I gotta talk to Bob about this. <laughs> Someone suggested to ask that question. He says, oh, you gotta, you gotta have, I'll tell you the story about when he was on Merv Griffin. I don't recall that anything unusual happened. No. Where's the phone? I want to call Murder. <laughs> yeah, call Murder. Who's that Bob? Yeah. I'm a pal Bob Madel. All right, Bob. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll blow that one away. All right. How do you feel about contemporary versus classic films? Oh, I'm much more in favor of the, the classics. I'm afraid they've got a little too gory and, and uh, bloody for, uh, for my taste at the present time. It, it's a triumph, I know, of the makeup artists, and I feel very happy for them that they got a lot of work nowadays. But uh, I really prefer the old-fashioned scares of uh, Cheney Sr. and Karloff and, and Dracula when it was done without so much gore and blood. Good. I agree with you. I definitely agree with you. I like blood where it mm. belongs, in me. <laughs> <laughs> Current projects, what you up to, other than touring, touring Washington and looking at the monuments and so forth? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm uh, doing four autobiographical books, turning back the clock to 1958, when it all began and spawned all of these monster magazines and movies. Uh, I'm uh, looking over the very first issue of Famous Monsters and the second and the third and, and covering 50 issues at a time. There'll be four volumes where I uh, check out the first appearances of Spielberg and Kingham. Uh, Stephen King, for instance, sent me a story when he was 13 years old. I should have got him when he was still cheap. He got a $10 million advance for two books he hasn't written yet lately. <laughs> But I'm about, an American uh, Express card. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm having, uh, I have a lot of fun. I say uh, reliving a quarter of a century or so ago, issue by issue. Now, your 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 collection is open to the public, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, any Saturday afternoon that I'm home, obviously I'm not home. This Saturday, I'm 3,000 miles away, and I haven't been cloned yet, so we'll work since on that. there, there yes. aren't two of me, but when I'm home, I've had as many as 72 school gets turn up in, in buses, and I had uh, 65 Japanese fans at one time, and they come from all around the world. I'm 
happy on a Saturday afternoon to take them down to Grizzly Land and <laughs> show them all the horrifying it. things I've collected. Now, one very important, this very serious question, because one, one of the fans said, what's going to happen to this collection when you pass on? Well, if I can't take it with me, I'm not going to go. What do you, what I love it. <laughs> I mean, when I pass on, where am I going to pass on? Oh, I don't to? know. Well, the great movie studio in the sky. <laughs> yes, well, uh, seriously, uh, I offered it all, the 300,000 pieces, to the city of Los Angeles, gave them about five years to show me some empty shelves and a place for posterity. Nothing came of that. So uh, there are about eight irons in the fire at the moment. The most serious seems to be an interest on the Queen Mary of all places. At least I don't think it'll ever be hijacked because <laughs> it's, uh, it's just there in dry dock. They have 60,000 square feet and uh, two decks that uh, are toying with the notion of possibly moving my collection and me uh, onto the ship. See, so we're have the love boat. This could be the, uh, uh, well, something well, boat. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we've got to go back to the conclusion of tonight's movie, and then we'll be back for some final words. Again. Hit it again. Got to see your hideousness. You've got to see mine. Wonder which of us is more awful. Nothing you can be is more terrible than what I am. A head without a body. A head that should be in its grave. I hate him. I hate him for what he's done to me. Can your horror match mine? Quiet. Someone's coming. I have come to feed your friend. While you feed yourself with hate, it prefers food. Your former sniveling fear becomes you more. Yeah. What makes you think I'm afraid of what's in there? Or of you? A mere head in search of a body. People fear what they don't understand. And what they can't see. What are you talking about? You're nothing but a freak of life. And a freak of death. Why should I be afraid of a few knocks on a door? But last night you ran. You were afraid of what you imagined lay behind that door. I? Imagined? It was I who helped graft together the bits and pieces that were stolen from the hospital. An amputated arm, a leg, a torso. It was I who helped piece them together like a monstrous jigsaw puzzle. And that same medicine that he's fed to me to activate my lymphoid tissues, has he fed it to that? No. No, on that he used an earlier formula. It wasn't as successful as the serum he's using on you, but it uh, was enough to allow the transplants to take. If your experiment is successful, be my turn. And what else has happened to it? You mean, what else? Well, it's, it's mutated some, of course. It's changed considerably. Why don't you open the door? And we'll both see how it's changed. Listen, you. I warn you. You better stop pestering me, do you hear? I'm getting fed up with you and your insidious talk. He should have cut out your tongue while he was at it. Afraid? Afraid of whom? Of you? No. 
Not anymore. But of it. Nor of it. He only keeps it locked in there so that it'll be safe, that's all. Safe? From me? <laughs> <laughs> you beast. I hope he prolongs your existence into a lifetime of agony. Then we'll see who's laughing at whom. You Wait. miserable fool. Get him. You and your father live here? Only on weekends when we want to get away from the city. This place certainly is lonely. Well, the further from prying eyes, the better. I mean, it's nice and quiet here. We can get away from the noise and telephones. Oh, I guess it is. Well, sit down, sit down. I'll fix us a drink, huh? My father should be back soon. You mean he's not here now? Oh, come on now, Doris. Do I look like a maniac who goes around killing girls? Now you've got to learn to trust people. You know, people like me, really. I'm sorry. I trust you. I trust you with my life. Well, I can't ask for any more than that. I'll be right back.
<laughs> I was beginning to think you'd forgotten about me. Forgotten you? Why, Doris, you've become very important to me. Very important. I put a little water in it so it wouldn't be too strong for you. Fine. I'm not a very heavy drinker. Neither am I. Well, um, here's to your future, whatever it may be. I'll drink to that. in my drink. body. A beautiful one. Soon it will be yours. Bill, you can't. Yes, I can. I want you as a complete woman, not part of one. Is it a crime to want to keep you alive? Is it a crime for science to jump ahead by years? This kind of thing must be done. It's over, you'll see. I've got to hurry now. The drug will wear off soon and she'll be awake. When she does come to, it will be your head consciously awakening for her.
Hey! <laughs> Don't touch that dial. Fori Ackerman will be back with closing words in just a few more commercials. We're back for our final closing comments from our guest, Mr. Monster, Forrest J. Ackerman, who's visiting us from Hollywood, except he's here, but he came from Hollywood, or Los Angeles, or somewhere around there, on the West Coast. He was responsible, by the way, for the lovely young lady who happens to be in the lid of my coffin. Ah, Vampirella. Now, Vampirella, yes. yes. Tell, very quickly, tell us a little bit about Vampirella. Well, flying down to Rio de Janeiro in 1969, a plane load of incredible personalities. There was Roman Polanski, A.E. Van Vogt, Robert Block of Psycho fame, the late George Pal, who gave us the time machine and his uh, star, Bet Nimia. Lightning was flying around the plane. I was looking down at the Amazon River. The hungry piranha were jumping up, hoping to get a free <laughs> meal in case we crashed, and having nothing better to do. I dreamed up Vampirella and her twin sister, Draculina, and the planet Draculon, where the rivers flowed with blood. And uh, so she survived in over a hundred uh, comic books. Was, was, there was a movie planned for this, wasn't there? Yes, there was. Uh, there were five scripts done on it, and then they uh, bethought themselves of the creator, turned it over to me to, to polish it, but nothing ever came of it. It's a shame. She, I'd love to have seen her come to reality. Mm -hmm. In more ways than fun. We're out of time, Mr. Ackerman. I want to thank you very much. Well, are we going to do the theme song? Uh, the theme song? Yes. Uh, uh, Which theme song is that? Brain drops falling on your head. Next week on Creature Feature, we're going to bring you an assignment terror with Michael Rennie. We're going to get into the psychedelic era with that one. That was sort of like Drag versus Frankenstein, too, a psychedelic. Yeah. Thank you. See you next week. <laughs>